Hello and welcome to the Grenade Creations podcast. This is episode 39. My name is Kirsty and I am coming to you from the west coast of Scotland, United Kingdom. First of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone for their kind comments on my last podcast. I know it had been a while since my last episode and the welcome back I got was so lovely. So thank you so much for all those kind comments. I also want to follow that up by saying a huge hello to any new viewers that may have found this video. I hope you enjoy and a huge hello and welcome back to all my like i don't know all my i don't know what's the word how would you describe that huge hello and welcome back to any returning viewers there we go that wasn't that difficult so yeah if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button which is just down there and once you hit the subscribe button there will a wee bell will turn up to the side of that box and you can hit this wee bell to ha get notified when I upload a new video. So sometimes it can be useful if you're kind of more laid back it might not be the best thing for you because you do get a notification on like your mobile and emails and stuff. Uh, so yeah so I just want to say a huge hello and welcome to everyone that's watching this video. So you can find me on Instagram as Grenaig underscore creations and I will put the spelling of that in the description box because I am aware that some people are not quite sure how hiccup are not quite sure how to pronounce Grenaig or spell it for that matter. So there's a wee bit of background on that and Grenaig is the Gaelic for my hometown which is Greenock and I wanted a tie to my hometown when I done my name change and I was searching and I was searching and I was searching now I don't I don't know Gaelic I never got the chance to learn it in school they took it off the curriculum but Gaelic is becoming there's a new surge for the Gaelic language in Scotland and a lot more primary schools are teaching it and are doing quite a lot of their lessons in Gaelic which I think is amazing it, but it's taken too long so there has been a re, like a resurgence basically if that's the right terminology um, in Gaelic and it's not that I wanted to get on the bandwagon with that one it's just I felt like it was very fitting it was the aesthetic I was looking for so I was very happy when I stumbled across that so yeah, I'll put the spelling Grenaic in the both in the description box, but you can find me on Instagram as Grenaic underscore underscore creations. You can also find me on Ravelry as little dash b. And you can find the Ravelry group as Grenaic Creations Podcast. A wee bit more admin just to get us started off. And it's something I haven't talked about on the podcast before. And that is, I am running a D-Stash cow with my friend Marcus, who is Marcus from Fiberpunks on Instagram. So we decided one day that we were both in the same boat when it came to trying to find new places to store our stash. I was having to become more... Oh, terms, words. It's having to become, having to really think about new places. And, oh, my brain's just gone completely blank. That's what happens when you do a seven hour shift at work. I was struggling to find places to store my yarn. Not necessarily hide it, depending on if it was a present for somebody or I didn't want my mum to see it. Um, yes, it was becoming increasingly difficult to find places to store my yarn. And I think I put a Instagram story out and um, Marcus jumped on and was like, oh my gosh, I am in the same boat, like stash, 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 basically. And uh, we 
decided that we were going to do a D stash and that we should do it as a cow and get people involved because a lot of people do complain that they feel that their stash is a wee bit too much or that they wish they would use more of it instead of buying new stuff and using that and it is a it is a cow to try and persuade people to go stash diving and bring out all those schemes that are a wee bit unloved or you're totally forgotten that you had that's that's okay like this is not a d stash to make you feel bad uh i've genuinely forgotten some of the stash i have because i don't put it on ravelry i don't keep a note of it i just buy it because i love it and then i put it with all the others so it's very easy to forget what you have but yeah i have some stash that has been lingering for a good amount of time so it's it's time that it got some love and it got turned into something really nice uh which is what this yarn is doing this has been in my stash for anywhere from eight months and older I have no concept of time so I'm not quite sure I remember the day I got it I just don't remember when that was but it was definitely eight to between eight and twelve months ago if not longer so yes there is a D stash going on and the rules can be found over on the Grenade Creations podcast Ravelry group on well, on Ravelry. Uh, but I will summarise the rules here if anyone is interested. There is a, a hashtag to be used on Instagram for anyone interested. And that is hashtag FPGCD slash. So that's FP, so FP for Fiberpunks and GC for Grenade Creations. So this D-stash has been done on a points based system and basically for every 10 grams of yarn used you get one point and we're doing it so it's fair on all levels. Not everybody knits with four ply, not everybody knits with lace weight, not everyone knits with chunky so on and so forth and we felt that this was the most fair way to judge this because there are going to be prizes at the end of the six months don't know if i mentioned it's a six month cow it's a six month cow it's a points based system and at the end of the at the end of this year because it started on june 1st at the end of this year marcus and i will be drawing winners dependent on the points based and who uses the most points and etc etc the point the all the rules are in the group so for example if you use 50 grams of yarn that's five points if you use 100 grams that's 10 points and so on and so forth we ask that you do not round up so if you were to use 15 grams that's not two points that's still one point but you are allowed to keep a tally of your totals. So if you used 15 grams in one project and 15 grams in another project, that's three points. So you keep a tally and then you keep that going in the post and then at the end you tally up your totals and that's your total. I feel like I'm butchering this description. Anyway. There's a D stash going on. Nip over to the group if you're interested. Follow the hashtag on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, you can still take part by going over to the group because there is a chatter thread as well as a finished thread. So yeah, that's going on until the end of this year. So I hope to see you there and I hope to see you taking part. It'd be quite nice to see some pictures of your stash that you're using as well or your finished objects or whatever. You don't have to, it's not a requirement, but it would just be nice. So, I think that is all the admin. And that took a lot longer to explain because I think I'm totally sure I butchered that. So I will jump into some finished objects. Of which there are three, which I'm very surprised about. The first finished object, I think you had seen the first hole basically um 
on my last podcast and I got the two finished and completed and ready but I've not worn them yet. So this is sock one and this is sock two. This is what happens when you're blessed. <laughs> you can just sit things there. Um, well this The yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners. I really like this colourway. There's just something really cheery and bright and amazing about a bright rainbow. And I love that it's not perfect for a, a commercial yarn. It's not perfect. Like, I don't know how well it's going to come up. But in this blue stripe, there's just one green stitch right there. So it's not a perfect commercial yarn. I'm not complaining by any means. I think it's actually really nice. Adds a wee bit of character. The heel is a random mini that I got sent in the mail. Apologies, I don't remember who sent it to me. But I've been using all these minis for my heels. And you'll see that on another pair. So it's just a random mini. I have no idea what the yarn content is, but it was a per it was a perfect weight for two heels. So just a simple vanilla sock, 68 stitches, with an afterthought heel, wedge toe, and a 2x2 two two cuff. These are quite short, and I do like my shorties because I can wear them in my favourite pair of Doc Martens, and I tend to wear them in my trainers and my vans, but... I have started knitting an ever so slightly longer cuff, as you'll see on the next pair. So that's finished object number one. Finished object number two. I can't believe how quickly I completed these socks. I think I had started and finished them within three days, which is crazy fast for me. I'm never that fast at knitting socks. But there's just something about the combination of the yarn and my wee addition to the heel that just made me want to finish them and wear them and see how I go on. And I'll show you that in a wee bit more detail. So this is sock number one. Again, just place that there. And I put number sock, put number sock, yes. Put sock number two on a sock blocker. I need to get better sock blockers or you know at least ones that are like actually for my size because like there's a bit of a gap there but yes uh, again two by two cuff 68 stitches and I'll show you on the one not on the blocker afterthought heel again but I decided to almost reinforce the heel just a wee bit more and I only done that because I wasn't 100% on the content of this yarn. I now know that it was 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stelina. So but at the time I wasn't 100% sure and it felt very luxurious so I wasn't sure if it was going to wear very well especially as a sock and so I decided to do a an eye partridge heel flap but it's like a fake heel flap because I continue to just knit around because I knit these in my nine inch circulars and I like the effect and the look and I wasn't a hundred percent sure though when I was knitting them because I when I, I I do all mine cuff down and this allows me to try it on make sure I've got the right foot length and when I was trying it on, I realised there was just ever so slightly just a wee extra bit of the fabric here because I was knitting these completely in the round. So you would have one, one row where you've got your slips and then you've got a plain knit and then your slips and then your plain knit. So there was less fabric here than there is here. So there's a wee build up of fabric just about there. And I was a wee bit concerned about the fit. But when I have them on, there's no issue. 
none at all if anything that wee bit of fabric actually works in my favor because i messed up well i don't think i messed up i heard somebody else talk about this on another podcast but when you do an afterthought heel you can either put in scrap yarn or you just cut and i put in scrap yarn and normally i would take all the scrap yarn out and work that way and just put on a new stitch but i'd heard someone talk about leaving in the scrap yarn for two stitches at either side so i'd done that on this occasion and i don't know if you can see it on the inside actually yeah so that wee fluff ball right there is the knot i put in for two stitches and you can see the two stitches right there so there's still two stitches on scrap yarn but i have knit the heel into those two stitches as well so there's just a wee bit of extra fabric there and i'm not sure if because of that it's created that join to be tighter but the extra fabric here kind of cancels out the tightness here I could be talking a whole load of rubbish and that will make zero difference when I wear them. I haven't worn either of these two pairs of socks because I wanted to keep them good for the podcast. But now that I've podcasted and I've shown you, I can wear them. So I'd probably give them a wee bit of a test run this weekend. And I'm really looking forward to wearing these ones especially because they're just so bright and cheery and like, oh, I just love them. Um... One more thing about them, as I bowled them up, I have done like an extra stretchy cast on. I think it's called the old Norwegian cast on. I could be wrong and I will correct myself if I'm wrong. But I've just realised how I've tied. Oh, that's going to annoy me. Anyway, third and final finished object. I showed you this when it was a f- when it was still in the needles on the last podcast and then it's off the needles and that is the shawl I made and there's no pattern for this this is just a simple start with three stitches increase and decrease as you go use up all the yarn I have no idea what the stitch count was on the edge none whatsoever I didn't count I didn't write anything down for this um, but I'm still very happy with it and I know I could just make one of these again without having to like sit and go right what did I do and this is going to go into my Christmas box present thing Christmas present box there we go that's a better way to say it and I still need to block it I still need to weave in like the ends as you can see but I'm really, really pleased with this. I may actually give this to one of the women in my work who has commented on it every time she's seen me knit on it. And she felt the yarn and she was like, oh my gosh, that's so luxurious because this is a merino cashmere nylon base. And it's from Viking Yarns, who I found on Etsy, who are still on Etsy, uh, if anyone's interested. And yeah, she just she was really interested. She's always got such lovely things to say when she sees me knitting. And I may gift this to her at Christmas. Uh, I hope she would like it anyway. Because she always commented on the colourway. Well, she doesn't know it's colourway. She always commented on the colour and the feel and the look of it. And she was just like, oh my goodness, that's lovely. I would, I would love something like that. You know, all those comments. It's maybe not as big as I would like but I mean you can still wrap it around you can still it still do the job it still be warm over winter especially here on the west coast um so yeah maybe once I block it I will be a wee bit happier with it but as a gift I'm pretty sure the recipient would be very happy with it I'm just nitpicking, am I? I'm trying, I'm finding, deliberately finding things I'm not loving. So yeah, three finished objects. Never expect that from me again in a two week period because that's 
crazy for me. And then as I was working on, as I started the podcast, I have a work in progress. I want to hide that for later. I done some stash diving. I was actually organising my stash at the weekend there on Monday. And I was taking my friend's advice and trying to get my stash on Ravelry because I'm a bad knitter and I don't keep a record. I've got nothing on Ravelry to see what I have and what I don't have. And so I pulled out some stash, got the box out, got my phone out, took some pictures, loaded them onto Ravelry as I went. I got like one box done for it. I kind of was just like, nope, I just need to organise it and I just need to put it all away because there's so much and it's going to take me way too long to organise. When I found this yarn. This yarn is from Queen of Pearls. I bought this before she moved to her new location. This is her birthday special. Well, it's her third birthday special. And at the time, I hadn't looked at the tag when I cast on. But I got to here. And we don't get candy corn in the UK. It was never a thing here. But I had bought candy corn when I was 16 and over in America from a friend in school. So I'd seen it, I tried it, and I was knitting this up and I was like, oh my gosh, this is candy corn. Well, okay, mostly that part. And I was instantly kind of like, because it looked like candy corn and I associate candy corn with Halloween, I instantly was just like, these are my Halloween socks. I've never had Halloween socks before, but these are my Halloween socks. I need to wear these at Halloween. And then it wasn't until I looked at the tag and I seen that the colourway is Sunset in Candyland. So it's very fitting that my thoughts of it being candy corn is confirmed by the fact it's Sunset in Candyland. Now obviously that doesn't say candy corn or anything like that, but it says candy. And I, candy corn is the only candy I know that has orange and yellow. So it seems very fitting. I'm rambling. I don't care. But yeah. Um, two by two cuff, 64 stitches. And I'm going to do an afterthought heel. I wasn't going to. I have purchased the New Depths heel. Um, which is by Becky Sorensen, uh, who is Soprano Knits. I have purchased that pattern. I've also purchased a pattern from Mina Phillips that is the Knitting Expat because I wanted to try a new heel out. I was absolutely adamant that I was going to try a new heel out and not do an afterthought heel. And because I'm doing them in the nine inch circulars, I kind of looked at both of these heels and I was just like, Nah, you know what? I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to do an afterthought heel because I like the fit. I can do them on, well, I can't do the heel on my 99 inch circulars, but I can put in the scrap yarn and keep knitting and then go back and put my heel in on a bigger circular needle and do it magic loop, which is what I always do. So I ripped out what I started of an alternative heel and I've just kept going. I really like the look of these. It's maybe not a colour I would choose again and that's nothing on the dyer or the colourway. It's just not really my colours. So these are definitely going to be my Halloween socks and I'll wear them for a couple of times and stuff like that but these are probably going to end up being kept really good because I'm only going to wear them like once a year. Which is a shame, but it's not my colour choice, it's not my colour palette, so... But I like supporting indie dyers, I especially like supporting local indie dyers, and I do like Queen of Pearls. Uh, for anyone curious that maybe didn't read it on the tag, this is on her Citadel sock base, which is Superwash Blue Face Leicester, and there's 400 meters per 100 grams. So yeah, this is, I want to say this is my only whip, but that is a lie. I have lots of whips, 
but this is the only one I'm working on. <laughs> That's the only way to put that. I have lots of whips, but they're kind of in the naughty corner just now. So I'm pretty much monogamously knitting socks at the moment. Although I have taken a notion to wanting to do a wrap, uh, like a big wrap. One of those wraps that takes like minimum four skeins of yarn. So I've been looking at Fading Point, Loro Wrap. Uh, there's a few others and I can't pronounce some of them. I think I've pinpointed one wrap that I definitely want to do. And it's only three skeins of yarn, which is okay. And it's going to involve some kid silk mohair lace. Kid, kid, is it kid silk lace? Is that how we just say it? Now I have some, I've just never used it. So I'm very intrigued as to how that goes. But I'm going to try and get some whips off the needles before I purchase that pattern. For anyone curious is the one I'm talking about. I can't remember the name of it. But it's number one in my queue to purchase. So if you want to nip onto my Ravelry and then into my queue, you can see the patterns and it's the number one on the list. So that will be my next pattern purchase. Um, sorry, something caught my eye. Uh, so yeah, if anyone's curious, that is. Uh, one more announcement before I wrap this up, because it's going to be a very short podcast. Perth Festival of Yarn. I'm going to talk about it again and I'm going to continue talking about it. It is less than three weeks away and Grenade Creations was down to have a stall over the entire festival, so the Saturday and the Sunday. Unfortunately that is no longer the case because of my shoulder mishap. I can't call it an injury because I didn't injure it. It just started getting sore and sore and sore and even though I've had a steroid injection now it hasn't got any better for the most part. Sometimes I'm completely pain free, other times, especially after coming back from work, I am in a lot of pain. So because of my shoulder, I have had to withdraw from the festival, uh, which made me very sad. It really dented my confidence and really just affected me more than I thought it would. But the amazing director, Eva Christie, has said to me that she would love if I could do even just a pop-up stall for an hour because I do have some stock and I can show you that right now. I have a whole host of yarns that I have dyed and bags that I have sewn. Oh right okay we'll do a couple at a time. So I have some yarn dyed up and ready Um, and I have some bags that's sewn up and ready as well and some stitch markers and some hand spun yarn so I have things ready for the festival it's just I don't have enough for a two-day event so Eva has been amazing and has offered me a pop-up stall sorry can I just show this off I really love this one because there's like pops of blue and orange purple and yellow and then green Sorry, I hope you love that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I am having a pop-up stall on Sunday the 9th between half 11 and half 12 on the second level of the Dewar Centre. Some people might not be aware that there is a second level and it's going to, like, people will be able to point you in the right direction but basically before you enter the main hall where all the other vendors are, there is a set of stairs and you will pass a cafe on the way in to the the knitter's lounge and the knitter's lounge is being sponsored by the knitter magazine which is a uk based magazine and it's also where the podcasters meet up it's going to be so i want i really want to see you there say hello so yeah uh, i'm going to be having a pop-up stall on sunday the 9th between half 11 and half 12. yeah i tried to do an instagram live video about that but I was so nervous and it totally came across in the video that I'm just kind of embarrassed by it now. So I hope you guys will stop by and say hello and maybe peruse the items that I have available. 
uh but yeah i'm just glad to still be a part of it because i did feel a wee bit deflated when i made the decision that i just wasn't going to be able to do a two-day event and eva has been amazing 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 about the entire thing so yeah i hope to see you at the festival in general i hope to see you at the podcasters lounge and i would love if you would come stop by my pop-up stall and with all that said in under 30 minutes thank you so much for watching this podcast hit the subscribe button if you want and i will see you later thank you for watching bye